You're welcome back. Well, amid fears that the lingering fuel scarcity and Naira redesign policy, which has led to a scarcity of currency notes and a chaotic situation in banks across the country, were being orchestrated to scuttle the forthcoming general election, the federal government yesterday dismissed such insinuations, expressing its commitment to the conduct of the polls. Also, the Independent Marketers Association of Nigeria, Ipman, Western Zone, has urged Nigerians to stop panic buying petrol assuring them that the fuel scarcity would soon ease off. We will be joined later by Kayode Kundayo, a publisher, Energy Times, and Zaka Bala, social commentator, is already here. But before I welcome Mr. Bala, we also have uh, Bayo Oluwake. Bayo, good morning and welcome to the program. Oh, and good morning, viewers. Okay, uh, Mr. Bala Zaka, I'd like to say welcome to you on the show. Mr. Zaka. Okay, we, we can't get the audio of uh, Mr. Zaka right now, but he'll be joining us to talk on some of this issue. But uh, first of all, Bayo, um, I don't know if it is good news or bad news, but uh, the CBN just said that the central bank cannot implement that uh, cashless policy to 100% as they want to. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Zaka, welcome. Okay. I can, we can hear you now, Mr. Zaka. We can hear you now. Good morning and welcome, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, since you're here right now, um, Bayo and I, I was, were just wondering some of the things that we, we raised as the talking points for today. Some people, on the one hand, have blamed the scarcity of fuel and Naira on saboteurs and even called it a political crisis rather than anything else. Uh, on the other hand, some people also say that um, uh, it's a gimmick to mark time for the Dangote refinery, especially for the fuel, so that when it comes on stream and sells at any price, no matter how exorbitant, people won't mind just because the product will be available. What is your insight? You know, what, what is really what you think is going on? And let's begin with you, Mr. Zaga. Well, uh, thank you very much for that excellent question. But I want to quickly say something. Uh, whatever is the dynamic. The dynamic will be negative. It is not the country Nigeria as a country that the continent of Africa was looking up to be. So we need to have looked inward and know that as a country the whole world. Whatever must have been the reason why all these shady activities are taking place, people like you would want to talk to the past and discuss what is right for our country. But I'm not going to discuss what is good. But something may be good or not right. If you there are some people who think that all these are planned so that the refinery will come up. And be selling at any price, and Nigerians will go for it. I thought buying anything is a function of disposable income. You and I know that as I speak right now, the minimum wage in Nigeria today is 30,000 Nigerian naira. 30,000 Nigerian naira cannot buy a 50 kg bag of rice. Who oh, a 50 liter is a return of vision. And any country, regardless of what we are talking about, any country where 30,000 naira or where the minimum budget wage cannot buy a 50 kg bag of rice, you know, 50 meters in front of this, that country is important. It is very clear. People like me have always been against this deregulation. Stress my record back to probably 15 years ago. So nobody will buy into this government or the government before this one or even the government before the one and before the, this one. So of course, say that this deregulation will destroy the economy. This deregulation is not the best for Nigeria. But I'm happy today that everything is going up. The price of 
aviation fuel has been deregulated. From mass cancellation of flights, flight delays, and mass charge in the aviation sector, we said to anything. Price of diesel has been deregulated. Air and investment that they were talking about. The only thing we have seen also is collapse of strategic industrial sectors, collapse in strategic domestic sectors, and collapse in commercial sectors. That is why you go to the bank today, even before this never designed crisis, banks open at time of four and they close around three o'clock. It's very clear. So people like me have not seen leaders and those who talk daily better. And people like me will define leaders this way. Leaders are those that other citizens elected and handed over their political economic and social destiny for them to manage to national interest. And from what is happening now, when anybody says Nigerian current generation of leaders are managing our economic, political and social destiny very well, the answer is no. Hmm. Well, you started by answering that, uh, you answer, started answering the question by saying that uh, every, every country uh, the citizens of every country are able to buy things be with the disposable income, with the income that is available to them, and the um, minimum wage is 30,000. Um, well, but people are, are just worried that, why is it that there was so much talk about refineries and they didn't come on, uh, on stream? Why is it that um, the president is the minister of petroleum and nothing is working? Why is it that the president himself is leading the committee that was set up to make sure that the fuel is available and nothing is working? Why is it that the NNPC is saying that there's enough fuel? They were telling us that there was enough fuel as at uh, beginning of January to last us for two months. Yet there was still scarcity and no, no heads are rolling as it were. Nothing is being done. So. People are now speculating. There are many conspiracy theories here and there and all that. So we're trying to just understand what is really happening. Why would there be uh, uh, the product, fuel, and then we can't find it? Why will, they, why will they, the blame game continue for this long and nothing seems to be happening? So what is the true picture? That's the question everybody has been asking everybody that they feel should know uh, something about this. But in the let me, yeah, go ahead, please. Let, let me paint you the correct and the true picture. The correct and the true picture is that Nigeria has been using the wrong model as far as the downstream sector of the Nigerian oil and gas is concerned. If you look at it, when we started experiencing the shortage of missile, whenever I use the word missile, I'm referring to the fine petroleum product. They are all alone. At the point it was attributed to recession, we got to a point they attributed to the coronavirus. Then at the point they attributed to the conflict. Then we went to some point again, they attributed to the Ukraine and uh, Russia. The truth is, we have gone out of exit. And that is what you will see. You don't expect a country of 200 million citizens. And in that country, the last time the refinery was constructed was like 33 years ago. And the, its current generation of leaders have not been able to maintain before the final to inherited, and they have been able to maintain those ones they inherited and to not construct new ones. We don't expect anybody to tell you that there will be no energy crisis. Okay, Nigeria went into democracy around 1999. From 1999 now, we are talking about 22 or 24 years. You should expect the democratic dispensation or the leadership of democracy that even if it will take 10 years to construct one refinery, by now we should be having two brand new refineries. So from what is happening, you can see that Nigeria has been reduced to a country where you are producing so much beef. But anytime you want to eat Akara or Moimo, you go to somebody else that does not produce or cultivate beef. 
Nigeria has been reduced to a country where you produce so much cassava, and any time you need to eat gari or cassava, or cassava flour, you have to now go and depend on somebody who does not eat cassava. But the truth is, it was the lie that we were getting from so-called technical and government places. But the facts are out now. We have been a thing the fact. At the point we were told late last year that there was so much a troll and a bad product. But the problem was that there were construction activities going on around Akata and It is now clear also that those were lies. And that is a big mistake always uh, going on. Private establishments are not supposed to be the ones to provide goods and services for citizens. It is government that is supposed to provide goods and services. Any private establishment you see, whether independent distributors or independent recyclers, they are there to buy profit. If everybody is saying Dangote, Dangote, Dangote refinery, nobody is asking where did Dangote get the food from. So you think Dangote will just come and be the one to rest in Nigeria? Dangote is not the government. Dangote must have gotten the food from either shareholders or from creditors. If Dangote got the food from shareholders, would Dangote pay shareholders dividends? The only way this can be shareholders is not to make the profit. If not, they will pull out their phone. And if they go to get the money from creditors, they must pay what we call a subject for interest. So I keep wondering when people are expecting that a private establishment is more people safe than business. Private establishments are how to make Office. If you establish a regular studio today or a hospital or a school, you are not establishing those because you love the citizens so serious. It is because you are planning on your feasibility studies and discover that you will remove profit and investment. So that should be the soul of every criteria. It is government responsibility. So in situations like this, where government is abdicating from its own responsibility. It is the duty of loyal citizens like us to tell government the truth, but we will tell government the truth constructively because we are doing everything to Nigeria's national interest. Okay. Um, I'll leave you in the hands of uh, my colleague, Bio. Bio, please, over to you. Mr. Balazaka is waiting. Okay, um, good morning, Mr. Balazaka, and it's always nice to, to hear your, um, your views on national issues. Um, I assume you have been following the presidential candidates as they've been campaigning. What do you make of their proposals, if any, to solve the energy crisis we have? And when I say energy crisis, I'm referring to fuel shortages that are cyclical, that keep happening from time to time, electricity shortage, and other related problems. God bless you for that question. I've been waiting for people who owe energy generally to ask me that question. I am telling you this with due respect that I am very, very disappointed in terms of this. Or transit or the pollutants that some of the presidential and the legislators have been given. It's surprising that all of them is working in the direction of all people. Nigeria is so free to spend on impulse to the sensitive product and energy product to protect. And I thank you very well for using the word energy. Even when they say they are using food struggling, they are using more food to feel it, what you don't want to. Electricity is not a problem. Those countries take the problem to replace products and to them to own gas or automobile. But it's the case of the people. Because we have a kind of consensus of megawatts of electricity. 
to all the Nigerians and the five billion dollars in the same key song that was before that. Because for instance, now, some people are here to people saying, we have the same product, you are subsidizing consumption. They are talking like that because they lack the understanding of the macroeconomic industry. That petrol you think you will give to a barber, and you think you are providing for to the barber, that petrol is the fact that if you need to be able to carry out a thing on the next day. When you go to the next salon, you do that petrol if you are subsidizing for what you can buy. To the next day, that is the family or she to be able to walk. When you go to the, the, the computer center, you can't have to say, oh, this will generate a lot more. So when you think you have a special computer, you are not. You are trying to provide energy or energy source for the person to work. And let me define something. Allow me some people to define something. So city is universally accepted economy to solving concepts. It is a concept that works everywhere. So if something is not working in your country, that will not invalidate the universality of that concept. What you need to check are the inefficiencies of your country that is making the country not to work. And let me give you a perfect example, an elementary example, as I say to you right now. The only reason why we have Nigeria and Nigeria Navy, Nigeria Air Force, it's because they are supposed to provide subsidy on security. So that does not mean that we all of us also know that it wasn't the Nigerian army that killed Shekau, it wasn't the baby. It was Ivan Gang that killed Shekau. So the good thing because all the Germans are diverting the body, killing the body is meant for air and bombs. Then you say you strap the entire military. No. So when you this is why you have public institutions to fight colleges of education or you say this is the culture that is for government to provide something to the education. So does it mean when the vice president of the program or director has given money and diverting all the money for equipment and access if you say we start public education? The reason why you have Teaching hospitals, central medical centers, and public health centers also needs to provide something to health. So, the thing is, the two central directors, the one of the north, the doctors are providing and killing, and diverse from those who say you scrap for the health. So, what do you do is the first thing is efficiency. So, it's the same thing with the first thing that is something. You need to provide something with energy. So then there are a sort of economic vampires, economic marupas, and economic creatures that are diverting all of this fuel and are making one move to scrap the concept. It is the inefficiency that you fight. So when I hear the presenter that is the same, I will remove something. I will remove something. I tell you that the maximum minimum wage in Nigeria is 30,000 Nigerians. Who so know that? The rest of Nigeria and some of their businesses are also businesses, and this is what will let you know that if you need that visionary, if you don't have credible and creative views on us, that is going to fail. Uh, uh, <coughs> yeah, thank, go, go ahead, Byron. Thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Zaka. Actually, you touched on very interesting points. I like your analogy uh, of using public health institutions, which exist side by side, the private health providers, and therefore afford citizens, even though our health system is also facing challenges, but at least the availability of the public health institutions and the private health facilities give citizens options to either go to the uh, public one or to go to the private one. Uh, so if we, my deduction from that is, if we just leave the petroleum sector, for example, entirely to the private sector, 
that may not be reasonable. So my next question has to do with uh, fuel directly now. I don't know if you can recall um, that some years ago, you could actually drive into a petrol station in Nigeria and opt to either buy what was called a one-star petrol, two-star petrol, three-star petrol, four-star or five-star petrol. I don't know if you recall this. There was a time in Nigeria when you could actually do that. And the prices were different. So if you could afford one or two stars, that was what you bought. And if you could afford the five stars, that was what you bought. But suddenly we woke up one day, and the only thing that was available was just one brand of petrol and at a very high price. In your view, do you think there should be options as we had before? Well, this is where I would answer you. So I didn't hear your question very well. I want to also let people who here to listen to hear to The reason why we are experiencing so many shortages is the social of first food. is because, first of all, people still wear all of If you go to have now, first of all, government does not provide you. So people are trying to get it. And the way you can do it is by you having to make Then you use your computer to carry out activities for your goal. Some other activities that will make you generate money instead of your family. In the context of Nigeria, let every country get this. We don't have electricity. You are living for about 200 years season, and the strategic sectors are there. If you don't have electricity for one day, two days, three days, what do you do? You rely on generators. And what we said, many people are making it. A lot of people are thinking the scarcity they are mad with us is because of cash and force. No, no. It's because today I can tell you, I try to explain that so we can or are I use it for one week. But if I try to explain or to I think we finished in two days. That is what I used to do. Electricity. And work. So what is happening two days in this? When I hear they say, we are consuming so much. You will see somebody who will buy 25 liters of gas, but you will buy like 75 or 100 liters to go around the papers. If there is electricity today, there will be blood at the police station. And what keeps me feeling bad and ashamed in Nigeria is Nigeria is a member of OPEC, like Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Libya, Iran, and Iran. Why can't Nigeria and OPEC who are economic leaders find out how Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, Indonesia? Okay. Um... Now, we were talking with uh, Mr. Bala Zaka there, and uh, he was giving us insight on what he thinks that um, might be the issue and some solutions, even though I think the last question, Bio, he didn't get it very well. But mm -hmm. so far, uh, some of the things he said were very, very um, enlightening as it is. Uh, but let's take this break, and when we return, we hope to be joined by another guest. Otherwise, it's just Bayer and I that will be X-raying or trying to X-ray some of these issues that were raised by Bala and uh, some of the talking points that we have for today. Stay with us. You're welcome back. It's still the run-up, and we're looking at the fuel scarcity. We're also looking at the Naira scarcity and so many other things. We are being joined by uh, Kayode Ekundayo, who is an energy expert, um, well, a correspondent or a writer for Energy Times, and uh, we will be looking at these issues that are biting us right now, as it were. Uh, Coyote, first of all, let me welcome you to the program this morning. Thank you so much. You've been in this energy sector writing about it and following the events, and we were talking with someone earlier on, and he was trying to give us his insight into what is really happening. But right now, we're just concerned. Uh, is this a sneak peek of what subsidy removal might look like? Uh, will be, this be the kind of prices we're likely to see? We've heard that the product has been sold at some places as high as 800 to 1,000 Naira uh, in parts of Nigeria. So tell us, 
Mr. Ekundayo. Uh, when we talk about uh, fuel subsidy removal as at June, so will we start seeing this kind of situation or even worse when it gets into the month of July? Or are there marked, marked uh, advantages that we will have if this fuel subsidy is actually removed 100%? Thank you so much. From what I am seeing since the last year in November, when we have been facing this uh, scarcity, what is implied to, to people who have a little knowledge or who have knowledge about the industry, what is indicating is that NMPC is trying to tell laws that the sector has been deregulated. Regulate, mm. And no matter what the situation is or likely to be in the next two weeks, we can never get the price at the price at the level we were getting it earlier on, like what we were getting before the end of this year. That is not likely to happen because the price NMPC is sending to the marketer is not the same price it's giving to them in the last three, four months. Definitely, the price is not going to be the same, and it's, there may be there may be surplus of fuel. There may be some place of fuel in the country, but we are not likely to have the same price as we are getting it all over the country. Already, the independent marketer is sending almost 400 naira in, uh, per liter in, different, in some places in Lagos, for instance. They are sending up to 500 in uh, Ibadan and some other areas in the southwest, they even outside the southwest. So I said they are sending above the official price, which is 195, which was just agreed upon about two weeks ago. But I can tell you that we are not likely to get that fuel at that price going forward. And what is in implies is that the sector has been deregulated. There is no announce to anybody. LMPC, who has been the sole supplier and the importer of that fuel, is telling us that yeah, because of finance challenges is facing, they won't be able to import. To so some of us, we don't believe that. You know, government has been insisting that they want to deregulate. And government has been saying that it's only June they will subsidize this fuel. And if we are subsidizing fuel in June, definitely it's not going to happen in June. Something has to happen immediately, at least to tell us that this is a gradual withdrawal of federal government from subsidy. So, and that is what we are seeing. And this is what the government and even the NFPs will have told Nigerians that yes, we have started deregulating, we have started doing this thing at gradual process and that is why we are feeling this thing but they are telling us that because there is no finance because uh, there is a general ukraine uh, korea crisis that is what led to the crisis we have today which is not the truth they are telling us and even if they pump and i mean you will hear what the NFTs were saying about two weeks ago that they have to they have, have up to six billion liters of fuel if you have six billion liters of fuel in stock what has led to this crisis that's just crippling the economy for the last three months. Why is it that this fuel are not pumped into the market? So you could see that this the, the truth is not being told, and we will continue to face this crisis until after the election. Okay. Before my colleague comes in now, uh, some people have advocated a complete privatization of the petroleum sector. Uh, do you think this will be part of a solution or the entire solution see, for this crisis brother, that we've been talking not, about? There is nothing to privatize again. There is nothing to privatize again. The complete, what we will have said, maybe possibly, sorry, is that complete deregulation of the tech sector. And the sector has been deregulated. The only product that is not deregulated in the sector is fuel, which touches everybody's life. This doesn't touch everybody's life. I can decide not to use this one. Gas, I can decide not to use gas. But fuel, petrol, that is what touches everybody's life. And that is the only, only product that is being handled by the federal government. And if you are talking about privatization, you only talk about the, the assets that is in the sector, which is, which is just, I mean, which are just the refineries. So we, it's not about it's not about privatization now that is leading to this crisis. It's not. It's about the, the government planning to withdraw or as withdrawn from subsidizing the product. And from what you could see now, there is no subsidy being attached to it. But again. You will see now that before, by the middle of next year, this year, uh, there is possibility that the federal government will still pay an NPC subsidy because it's still the sole importer of this product. 
Mm. And unfortunately, it's not selling at high price, though it has increased its export price. But it's not selling at that exorbitant price that led to selling in the, in the, in the retaining market that we are seeing today. And getting the price down, I'm not likely, we are not likely to see that price coming down to the official rate. Definitely, we are not likely to see it in the, in the next two months to come, even to June, and in fact, to the end of the year. Okay, uh, my colleague Bio is standing by to also ask some questions. Bio, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kade. I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you. Hello, I can hear okay. you, sir. Oh, okay, Kade, I have a couple of questions, and I'm also conscious of time. Okay, sir. So, so I will appreciate okay, if you sir. can just give your professional and candid uh, response, you know, make, make it short. Uh, the first is okay, this. Sir. NNPC says, from what you said, has a storage, and I, and I agree with you. Actually, I was waiting to hear somebody say that, that not too long ago they told us they had 6 billion, I think, liters yes. of fuel. Yes, 6 billion. Now, yes, now. Okay. Now, the question I have for you is, do we have the capacity to store 6 billion liters of fuel? Knowing yes. that all, yes, we all have the, the depots, we have the capacity. Yes. Yes, okay. and the reason why how we have the capacity is that we have various depots now that are private okay. depots that can store these products. That is where exactly oh. what they are saying. It's okay. not that they don't okay. have that depot. No. Yes. Okay, okay, good. Second question is, and I was just discussing with Yambu when we were off air uh, during the commercial break. Um, some years ago, you could drive into yes, a sir. petrol station in Nigeria and opt to buy either one star uh, fuel, PMS, one star or two star or three star or four star or five star. If you were, say, for instance, driving a BMW, you would naturally buy a five star petrol. Buy five star petrol. If you're a bus driver, you will buy one star or two star. I don't know if you remember a time in, in Nigeria when you could actually do that. The question is, why are, are we suddenly being given only one option of petrol to buy? Why not I, me going in and buying low methane for two two star for which I pay how much or I can buy four star whatever it is that I, I choose to buy. Why do you think this is no longer possible? Ah, ah uh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. But what I can a little hear about uh, driving to finish station to buy. I don't know. I can't. I couldn't pick you. Okay. So can, can you can you hear me better? Can you hear me better? Yeah, there is a noise on the ground. There is a lot noise on the ground in your place. Can you hear me better? That is, yes, I can hear you. Okay, he now. said there was a time you could drive into a filling station and buy, decide to buy either one star or two star, or even three star, four star, or five star, depending on the car that you're driving. Why is that not obtainable That's anymore true. now? I didn't get a five star. Is it, are you talking about oil or what? I didn't get you. Petrol. petrol, 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 petrol. You could walk, yes. you could drive into a petrol station in Nigeria and choose yes. to buy either a one star petrol, two star petrol. Okay. Or the, the one star is very low quality. Okay, two star quality is slightly higher. Three star is up to you get to five star. It was possible in Nigeria at the time. So, my question to you. Is why is it that we have only one option, and that option is very high, is, is at a high price? Okay, thank you, sir. That is what the government we have. You see, we've been saying that leadership quality will lack it in this country, and that is the problem we have. Honestly, what we are talking about is happening in Ghana. It's still happening in Ghana. It's happening even in some other West African that are not even good oil producing states. In this, in the, in the, in the Africa, in the West African country, unfortunately, in, in Nigeria, the, what that is what our leadership has caused us, and we keep on saying that we need to have a leader that understands the system, that understands the economy. But Nigeria is very, very unfortunate. We keep on having old men that doesn't even understand what the economy is. We keep on having the same set of people that doesn't even want the growth for the for the youth. We, we keep on having the same challenge all over. And if we see, if we see what we'll be facing is independent, it's the same thing we'll be facing. And that's why we remain the same. We remain with Maroni on the same spot. 
until when we have a youthful leadership that understands the economy, that can better the economy, that is when the Nigerian system can grow. But what we have now, we keep on having the same challenge all over the country. Okay. What we are talking about okay. is being operate is, is being operational in other West African countries, except in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Okay, thank you. My last question for you, Kalde. Um, I don't know if you have been, I suspect you have been to the Dangote refinery. Yes, several times. Okay. Now, you will notice that the Dangote refinery is facing the Atlantic Ocean and actually has its yes. own jetty as well. Okay? Yes. Now, some people have suggested that yes, those of us waiting for Dangote refinery might be in for a shock. And why? Because Dangote is in business to make profit. And he is most likely going to be exporting because he's going to buy crude from NNPC. He's going to pay NNPC to get crude oil. And then he refines in his refinery. And he will export. And if you notice, over the years, many West African leaders repeatedly visited Dangote refinery. The president of Togo has been there. It, it, this is usually not announced. These presidents come, they pay a visit because they are also waiting for Dangote refinery to be ready. And so when that refinery becomes ready, those who have this view are saying that if we in Nigeria think that the moment that refinery is commissioned, we just have access to, to petrol or to whatever, we may be in for a shock because the guy is going to look for the market that is willing to pay him, and if he has to export, he will do that. What's your reaction to that? Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, I have two uh, layers of uh, answers to those questions. One, uh, Dangote Dan Refinery has been sourcing for uh, buyers, I mean, the, uh, the consumers, for a very long time since uh, the establishment. It's not me now. Mm -hmm. And second, uh, the second answer is that that is the reason why NNPC is a, is a shareholder in uh, Dangote Refinery. And the, what, it, what that means is that Dangote, uh, Dangote Refinery is going to be supplied, could, I mean, NNPC is going to supply crude oil to Dangote Refinery. The 20% that the 20% Dango, uh, NNPC has in Dangote Refinery is meant to supply crude. And that is what that is meant for. So, by the time the market comes, we are not likely to have that shock, as many people are as, as, as saying. It's going to sell the normal market, and Nigeria is going to make a lot of, uh, I mean, a, there will be a lot of uh, subsidized uh, in terms of getting the product uh, available. For instance, when you import fuel from anywhere in the world, you pay for a number of things like MPA, cargo, delivery, mm -hmm. long distance, all those things. You pay for all those things. But when it is Dangote, you can actually use truck from Dangote refinery to distribute within Lagos. You can use it to distribute within Nigeria. So those costs is no longer there. And that will have an impact on the price that we're going to be sold to NNPC or sold to the consumer or sold at the retail station. So we are going to have a lot of benefit from there. And it's not okay. that there will be any shock. If, if it is selling at international price, yes, Nigeria is going to derive maximum benefit from it. Okay. Uh, Thank well, you. Thank you very much yeah, for your yeah. Thank you. Uh, Coyote, uh, our time is really off. If you can do in 30 seconds, please. Uh, uh, Bayo asked this question okay. earlier. Um, are you comfortable yes, with what uh, you have been hearing the presidential uh, candidates all talking about reformation in uh, the power or energy sector. You've listened to them. Okay. Uh, what are your takeaways yes, from what they have been talking about uh, issues of power, issues of energy, issues concerning yes. fuel that we're talking now? Yes, yes. Briefly, please. Okay. You want, okay. Uh, yes. A lo uh, factually, all of them have been talking about uh, uh, restoring or have uh, stability in power supply. It's normal for them to talk about it. We have seen it before. It's not new to, to us. Yes, it is when they get there, they will now face with the real task. 
before the present government was there, we we understand. We he told us the federal government. I mean, they told us many things about what they are going to do. But when they get there, they find something else again. I can tell you when Obasanjo before he became the president, he said many things. But when eventually he became the president, he changed. He brought up. Uh, he brought a uh, uh, but like it was there, we, we eat 4,000 megawatts on the one particular day. The thing went down in the evening of that day. And since then, we've been like, with Maroni fighting to get 4,000 since 20,000. 20, I mean, the other is 2,000. We've been fighting to get that 4,000 megawatts. We don't need for that particular year till now. We have not moved beyond it. Except maybe once in a while, when we have it and we go back to 3,000. That has been the state. Now, the magic, the, all the candidates are so far, we don't know yet until when they come in. Already, you know, we have, uh, the federal government have a, 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 a partnership uh, with uh, CIMEN. They have started doing something. So, whoever come will build on that. And I really don't know the strategy they are bringing in to ensure stability. Because we have the power supply in this company. We have the power plant. They have the capacity of about, about 11,000 megawatts. What is the problem is with what we don't know. And the, the uh, analysts have been, our uh, experts have been telling us that the problem we have is the transmission, not even the distribution network, the transmission. And truly, at times, we get 5,000 megawatts, the thing we just drop. So it has been the issue. But the magic that you bring to stabilize this power okay. is what we don't know yet until when they come in. So we okay. can really not say that this is what they are likely to do, this is not likely they, they do. Because it's not we who will determine that. It is the activities and what they are receiving to the system that will tell us that, yes, these people are, are doing well. These people are not doing well. Let's, let them come in, then we see what they are going to do, at least in the next five, six months when they get to power. Okay, okay, Kyle, thank you so much. So it's an act of faith for Nigerians to pray hard that when they get there, whatever promises they have made, they will keep. Yes. Thank yes. you so much, Kyle, yes. for being a part of our program today. Thank you. Okay, that was uh, Kayode Kundayo, uh, a publisher of uh, Energy Times newspaper, and he's been also giving us insights to what he feels the problem is in the sector, in the energy sector, as it were, and so many other things. Um, we'll take a short break for the news. When we return, Bayer and I will be looking at some of these issues and others that uh, we've had in the course of the day. Stay with us. You're welcome back. Today we have been looking at the uh, scarcity of uh, almost everything essential in Nigeria. Scarcity of fuel, scarcity of Naira nodes and all that. But I'm interested. Um, okay, well, my name is Nyam Gulagaji and Bayo Oluwake is still here. Uh, Bayo, um, what has interested me in all this is uh, how swift our justice system suddenly has become. Uh, was it not yesterday or the day before that political parties, up to 14 or 18 of them, went to court and had an injunction saying that the central bank and the federal government must never go back on the Naira redesign policy. They made sure that they got that judgment that gave them the, uh, or prevented the central bank of, from going back and saying that they are going to extend the time for validity of the old notes. This morning, we've heard that the Supreme Court swiftly has also given uh, a ruling that that policy cannot be implemented. I'm just wishing that the justice system were this swift all the time to administer justice, to do what the needful is at all times, because I've seen cases that have been in the courts for more than 10 years. Some of them, we just forget about them, and that's the end of it. And I'm just wondering, why, why the swiftness? Why that so much efficiency and effectiveness uh, in this issue of the Naira? Uh, did, you not, did it not cross your mind why the, everything is moving so fast in, at this time? What do you think could have been the cause? Well, it crossed my mind, um, but also the, once, once there's a dispute between the components of the Federation, you know, the Constitution, I don't know which particular sections now, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but, but I know that there's, there's some amendment to the Constitution. 
especially due to you know uh, electoral issues that took so long to resolve and all that and all that. So electoral law was amended, things were amended, but also disputes between the component units of the federation, whether the federal government and the states or the local governments and the states or the local governments and the federal government. The, the, the legal adjudication process was shortened. So I think the case will have to either start from the Federal Court of Appeal or something like that, you know. But then you can go straight to the Supreme Court if it's a, some sort of a constitutional issue. In this case, I'm suspecting that because the central bank is autonomous mm. uh, and therefore um, cannot be, you, I mean, the, the, you know, it, it has autonomy, so to speak, and therefore it cannot be one arm of government that can give an instruction to the CDN. I think it's because of this that they went to the Supreme Court. Having said that, I, I mean, I stand to be corrected, but that's my reading of the situation. But having said that, I think as well that it was fast. I agree with you that it was fast. Uh, this could be because the appellants, uh, you know, um, sufficiently convinced the justices that it was a matter of urgent national importance especially given the fact that the deadline that was issued for everyone to have exchanged their old notes, mm. it will have just come up in two or three days, you know, from when they filed the suit. Still, having said that, I think it was very fast because the Supreme Court could have said, okay, we issue an injunction, let the proceedings, let the status quo remain until this case has been heard, mm. in which case the February 10 deadline will still not have mattered. You know, it would be by extension, people could still continue exchanging money until the Supreme Court case was had. But they didn't, they didn't do that. They issued a judgment. Um, now, having issued the judgment, because now they've issued the judgment, so we can comment about it, is when the case is in court that we are not allowed mm, to yeah. comment on it. So now, having given judgment, I'm just wondering, because you see, the executive implements, the, the executive executes. Mm. But, court judgments, unless it's in a private matter, okay? So, still, you are going to need the executive to implement this. The agents that can implement that judgment will be the CBN, which is part of the executive, mm. even though it is autonomous, okay? So, uh, and then if you have to enforce anything that you need, maybe the EFCC or you need the uh, fraud section or whatever, anti-fraud section of the Nigeria police or ICPC or whatever, so I, I mean, so we will see. Let's see how this implementation would be, uh, uh, especially given the fact that the initial deadline that was given is just so close, just yeah. two, two days to go. Okay. Well, I, I just wish, I just wish, and I hope that uh, the administration of justice will be, will always be as swift as this. Let it not be this one that um, people are speculating that okay. Uh, they were supposed to, governors were supposed to meet the president and make a case for the students. They didn't go. Uh, the, the, the lecturers were on strike for over eight months. They didn't go to the president to appeal to him. Uh, lect uh, people were suffering in one way or the other. They didn't go to the president until it became naira and close to election and they, uh, everybody started talking. So I just mm. hope that Whatever or whoever was saying is because it's affecting them directly. That's why they're doing this. Will be proven wrong by the justice system sitting up and doing their work and administering justice very fast. But the mm. next two, just, the, yeah, I'm good. Sorry, yeah. just one quick thing. Just one quick thing. Um, I'm also trying to understand the basis of the court case mm. because if what we have seen in the media and from us, uh, from some of us. Uh, of the guests we have had on this program, the complaint has always been that there are not enough new Nara notes. Mm. The, the complaint wasn't that they still had old Nara notes to exchange. Mm. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, that's, that's it, that they don't have the new Nara notes. Available. So the complaint is that there are no new Nara notes. So if, they, if, if Kogi and the other two states that went to court are saying that there should be an extension of the deadline, not that central bank should be compelled to print more new notes. Yeah. I'm finding this very interesting because I haven't seen people saying 
we still have old Naira notes we've not been able to exchange them. Mm. Unless maybe the governors who went to court or the governors of those states said that their own states have the old Naira notes and have not been able to exchange them. That's an so interesting I angle, yeah. I was, I was expecting that the court case would be to say that the CBN should be compelled to disclose how many, how much in value of new notes it printed mm. and whether that was sufficient to go around. And if not, for an order of the Supreme Court compelling the, the, the CBN to print as much Naira notes, new Naira notes as would erase the scarcity. Mm. Because extending the validity for me will not solve any problem unless those governors are the ones who have put Naira notes in there. Yeah, really nobody has, has ever come out plain to say that there are, there are old notes that are somewhere that are, people are not able to exchange. It's the ability to get money, new notes and all that that exactly. has always been we a problem. Exactly, we don't have the and, new notes, we are all suffering. Know. So that should be the case. But they see? have won now. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's, just, let's just take these two things together now. I wanted us to take one after the other, but our time is going. Uh, in a Nigerian village, I don't know if you know, a king has created a currency to drive economic empowerment in the rural community. The traditional ruler called Ademola Ajibola introduced what they call the TLK voucher in August 2021 as a means of exchange within Ijara Isin, located in the Sin local government area of Kwara South Central District. Ijara Isin has a hilly terrain and, you know, like many rural communities in Nigeria, its economy is based on the incomes of civil servants, healthcare workers, subsistence, uh, crop farmers, and so on. He created the voucher system upon his return to Nigeria in August 2021. Earlier, the monarch had converted a part of the moribund Nigerian Postal Service office in the community into a microfinance bank called the Ijara Isin Development Fund Center. The microfinance bank now issues the vouchers. <clears throat> because <clears throat> this microfinance bank does not have the license to operate as a microfinance bank, it uses the license of a microfinance bank owned by the king himself. The IDFC, as they call it, the assistant manager in that IDFC, Yomi Odumade, revealed that after Ajibola became king in 2021, he was handing out money to his subjects in the hope that when they spend it in the community, it will have a multiplier effect that will expand the community's income. However, the king discovered that instead of spending it on the local economy as he had hoped, many preferred to either save it <laughs> in their bank accounts or even spend it on goods sold outside the community. So to address that, he now introduced a voucher and that voucher is legal tender in that village. You take the voucher, when he gives you the voucher, he doesn't give money now, he gives the voucher. When you take the voucher to any, any store, any salesperson within the community, it is accepted. So now, whatever money he gives out to the people, it circulates within that community. So I'm sure in that community now, they wouldn't be thinking about new Naira notes. I'm sure in that community, there won't be all this fight and all that because they have a voucher that serves as money alongside the Nigerian currency. Well, since it works, it works for that community, I think that was innovative. That was very creative. And right now, they won't have this problem. And secondly, like I said, I'm joining them together. We have heard that banks in Medugri have started dispensing the new Naira notes at various ATM points and even over the counter after Governor Zulum threatened to revoke land C of O of any bank hoarding new Naira notes. Now, if this is true, I am happy and sad at the same time because it shows that most times the only language we understand in this country is force, for something which should have come naturally without force or inducement. If this be true, kudos to Governor Zulum. I hope other state governors will learn from this action and know that being chief security officer of the state does not have to be the control of police and army. And I hope they won't be complaining all the time that it's because power is not in our hands, it is in the center and all that. Those are my observations. And I think I like these two things. <laughs> Just a few comments from you before Great. we wrap up. Yeah, no, the last one, Governor Zulum for me is the best governor in Nigeria. Personally, he's the best governor in Nigeria. I won't say more than that. And you just seen, uh, I mean, he's, he doesn't care about his life. He's there for the people. He's visited areas liberated from Boko Haram many times. 
Sometimes during those visits, he came under fire. It was, it was all public in the public space. He's my best governor. Coming to the traditional ruler, the KDC, and I respect what he's done. I think it's quite innovative and good. Um, the only thing is, I wonder if he's not in the gray area between what is legal and what may not be legal. I think His Royal Highness would need to check with the CDN to make sure that you know what he's doing is in line with the monetary rules and regulations. Uh, but I think it's very innovative, and I don't see how the CDN will not support that. He's not printing money, so he's not contravening laws. But he's doing something quite innovative that you can give vouchers to redeem cash and so on. And I think it's something really good. It should be commended. Okay, well, that's the much we can take today. Uh, whoever is doing something good, we commend you. Whoever is doing something bad, please desist from it. This is our Nigeria. Violence is not allowed. So whether you get cash from ATM or not, whatever it is, be peaceful. Thank you, Bio, for being a part of the program today. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Until tomorrow, on behalf of the entire team, my name is Nyam Gul Agaji Singh. Thanks for being there.